Hello. This video is dedicated to you, my supporters, friends, family, all of you who have never stopped believing in me. Maybe I posted something that you might have disagreed with, that you might have thought was bad, a philosophy, an idea, but you've never stopped supporting me as a man, as an individual. You've always resonated with my sincerity and my earnestness to do the right thing. So I just wanted to share this with you. I wrote this piece not too long ago, and there's a lot I can say, there's a lot I could say, there's countless videos I could do, but as you know at this point, I want to get you off of YouTube as much as possible and into the real world, making the changes that need to happen, helping the people that need to be helped. And we can't do that online. So here is my awakening. You could call this a sequel to Revelation, my book. So without further ado, here is my awakening. It's been a while. This is my revelation. This is my awakening. Four years ago, I began the process of revelation, awakening to the sober reality of our times. I began to experiment with my diet, began to question the validity of what our so-called authorities were telling us. I quickly realized that I had been lied to, that we had been lied to. I started to share my journey with you in hopes that my process my experiences would help and empower you to take action, to live a life truly in line with your heart. So I began to advocate veganism and the principles of pacifism. I sincerely believe that if we merely changed our diet and lifestyle, the world would change. By eliminating the toxic foods and embracing a truly healthy diet, we would simply think straight and be able to revolt against the tyranny that is wrecking havoc on not only human sovereignty, but on the natural world in which we depend. I championed all of the causes that any good college student does. I followed the herd. Climate change, minority rights, feminism, and the rest of it. I truly believed that what I was doing was on the right path, that I was on the right side, that we were the underdogs fighting the establishment. I fell under the spell of political buzzwords, not truly understanding what I was getting myself into. I chose a side, not knowing all the facts. My emotions were being manipulated, and I didn't even know it. As this was occurring, I continued to fall deeper and deeper into the rut that is the internet celebrity culture. I made videos about what I ate and what I did on a daily basis merely following what the so-called leaders in the health and fitness community were doing. I began to notice that the good that I was supposedly doing was in vain. That I was merely perpetuating this culture of non-action, egoism, and narcissism. Around this time, I began to wonder why every presidential election felt like theater. Why nothing ever changes despite the existence of so many pure-hearted young people like myself. Are we progressing like they say we are? Or are we regressing, moving further and further into decadence? I was confused and frustrated. There must be something that I am missing here. We seem to talk about change instead of actually making the change happen. It was not until I graduated from university that I became aware of the programming that was being done to me and my fellow students. Under the guise of critical thinking, my professors led their classes like any good shepherd. There seemed to be a silently enforced rule. You are never to criticize or say anything that challenges the orthodoxy. Question the tenets of feminism? You're a misogynist and a sexist. Question the flooding of migrants from the third world nations into Europe and America? You're a racist and a bigot. Question the morality of Israel and their murder of countless Palestinians. You're an anti-Semite and a hater. There are many examples I could share with you, certain things that if you criticized, 
you will be labeled and ostracized from society. Why can't we discuss all sides of a topic in a rational manner? Why am I called a name when I merely want to examine the facts without the bias? There came a point after my graduation from the indoctrination center that I began to question the so-called truths that were being pushed into my impressionable and idealistic mind. Not knowing where to begin, I started with a simple thought exercise. I began to seek and understand the direct opposite of the views I held to be true. If I believed race to be a social construct, now it was a biological reality. If I believed that all human beings are absolutely equal and identical, now we are all different and unique. I was actively breaking down the programming that had been installed into my mind, one thought, one idea at a time. Now that I was out of the indoctrination center, my true education began. I studied books such as Plato's Republic, Aristotle's Politics and Rhetoric, Horace and Virgil, Tacitus and Cicero, epic tales of the Bhagavad Gita, and the sacred stories of the pre-Christian gods of the North, as well as the lives and philosophies of the American geniuses, such as Washington, Jefferson, Adams, and Franklin. Without the filter that is our current cultural paradigm, I was beginning to develop my own opinions on these often overlooked works of art. I was also looking into perhaps the most hot-button period of history, World War II. I began to seek out the history without the propaganda. I wanted to understand the mind of the supposed most evil man in history, so I studied the events leading up to the war, the German Weimar Republic, World War I and the climate of Europe in the early 20th century, and yes, I read Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf. I quickly realized that I was not being given all the facts, that what passes for history is merely rehashed propaganda from the war, that we are in the world, we are living in the world created by the victors. These discoveries left me confused. I didn't know who or what to believe. Do I accept the supposed facts and worldview being presented in an unrelenting manner by the establishment, by the system? Or do I follow those ideologies and truths that are acting against it, that are working to create an alternative to this capitalistic, exploitative, and unsustainable global tyranny? Knowing that anything endorsed and supported by this unjust system simply cannot be trusted, I went down the uncomfortable path. Confused and afraid, I simply went with my heart. So I began to follow the trail of other patriots and freedom fighters before me on a quest for truth, justice, and an end to exploitation and enslavement. For this past year, I spent countless hours studying, thinking, and exploring. I needed to make sure that I was on the right path and have not simply gone a downward spiral into an uneducated cesspool of hate-mongering and propaganda. What I have learned is this. World War II was a turning point in human history, a battle of opposing ideologies, of opposite worldview. On the one side you have nationalism, and on the other side you have globalism or international communism. Our world today is the world of the victors, the world of the so-called allies. This is the world of globalism, of capitalism, communism. This is the world of cheap Chinese imports for the rich and a life of perpetual wage slavery for the poor. The world of uninspiring modern art and architecture. The world of mindless consumerism and atheistical materialism. The world of blind equality. All races, cultures, and ethnicities are the same. The sexes are the same. Each individual is essentially the same. In our sameness, in our equality, we are all one homogeneous goop, rootless and without an identity, able to be exploited by the tyrants, our alleged representatives that we have in power today. If you have no identity, one will be installed into you by the kosher forces of the state. Make no mistake, they may say they are for freedom, democracy, equality, tolerance, multiculturalism, diversity, but their actions would say otherwise. 
This is the ideology that brought us colonialism, slavery, and the chain stores of suburbia. This is our world today, the world of globalism, brought to us and installed by the Allies, by the victors of the Second World War, by that ideology, the ideology of international communism or globalism. We too are at a turning point in human history. It is five minutes to midnight and we are quickly running out of time. Will it be globalism or will it be nationalism? It's time to make a choice. Time to choose a son. Thank you. And the ashes are all cold now. No more bullets. And the embers are dead. Whispers in the air. Tell the tales of the brothers gone. Desolation